Hi, everyone. Um, I am leading the uh, global growth operation at Podimo. That's how you pronounce it. And um, Podimo offers personalized audio entertainment um, for the whole family, from top shelf audiobooks to uh, exclusive podcasts. And podcasts is currently the core business. Podimo is a three-year-old company. We operate across six countries in Europe, roughly, and expanding our operation in Latin America. We're a three-year-old company. What does it mean? It means that more than two-thirds of our lifetime was built up during COVID. Uh, it's been a tough time. I joined Podimo almost from the very beginning. And um, we had to build an operation remotely. We had to build an operation where people didn't know each other. We hired people without meeting them. Basically, just the screen was kind of the epicenter of our culture. What does it mean for a company growing up in such an ecosystem or environment? Well, it means that you have to think creatively. You have to be extremely focused, laser focused on finding your growth formulas. And I would say, if you look, at, look up a, you know, on Google, what is a growth formula? You would find some sort of financial equation or something similar. I think it's fine. However, it means something different for us. And, and today, I'm going to try to inspire all of you to um, think differently about growth leadership. And before I do that, I would like to introduce uh, a concept. Many of you might have heard it before. Um, it's quite simple. We call it the concept of needle movers. And what does it mean? Well, um, if you compare targets, goals, to needle movers, basically the same. However, there's a ma major difference. In my opinion, the difference is Targets, goals are binary. You either reach a target or you don't. And by not reaching it, you kind of accept that there's an opportunity or possibility that you don't reach it, and that becomes a part of your culture. So it's a cultural thing, an entity to say, we want to focus on needle movers only. Why that? Because they're non-binary, because they're high impact and naturally scalable. One could say, well, if high impact might not be scalable. For us it is, if it's not scalable, it's not high impact. And if it's not high impact, it's not scalable. So making that a cultural manifestation, if you will, really takes forward the kind of understanding of the needle mover. And uh, you might ask, so what is a needle mover? Can you give us an example? And this is exactly why I'm here today. Uh, but before I do that, I want to give you a bit of context on our business. Um, as mentioned earlier, entertainment is a very crowded space. There's a lot of, um, obviously a lot of apps in that category. A lot of businesses trying to kind of fight for attention. And um, one other thing that is extremely complex is that our product is not a uh, bus ticket or shirts and shoes. It's people, right? People with opinions, people with personal brand, people kind of with a need to express themselves. And uh, secondarily is the users, right? If you don't have an interest in a certain topic, maybe apart from now where sports is kind of flooding the, the, the TV screens, etc. But usually, if you're not into sports, you're not going to binge sports. It's not, up, it's not for you, right? And then, obviously, we can work towards that, but it's not a here-now action, which means we need to kind of operate within this pretty complex ecosystem of grabbing user attention. And um, from the very, very beginning, we've been laser-focused on collaborating with our creators, our creators, basically those who produce content for us and really, really be focused on putting them in the front seat and us being in the back seat, kind of empowering them to move forward. And that's exactly where the needle mover concept of creator growth came up with Empodimo. And I would say this is a pretty big part of our growth formula. Um, this is something that we work across teams with. You know, this is a big part of our unit economics. Um, I'm not going to go into the numbers, but I'll show you some very specific examples of how exactly we're working with our creators to kind of create this triple win situation where everybody benefits. And I will take you through four different activation pieces that's done through social media, but there's so much strategic work that's put behind this. Let's start with this one. So this specific piece is a content activation of a launch that was uh, done by an uh, Argentinian uh, influencer and creator. Um, 
and grabbing the attention is everything. Most of you know this. Creating the first handshake with a user telling an interesting story is key. So this is one of the key cornerstones. Second, of course, there's a monetization purpose behind collaborating like this with creators, right? We want them to convert. We want them to bring in new users. We want them to promote their brand, express themselves. But we also want to convert. And by flooding their feeds with offers, it's not really going to cut it. So we have a very hands-on planning process to kind of nail in which timings would make sense for them to tap into and then create um, basically like an exclusive offer for them to, to push out. But always consult with them, right? Because at the end of the day, it's a relationship game. You don't want to, you don't want to say, um, you know, promote a message that just doesn't fit within their community and the vibe that's kind of going on there. So this is a Black Friday example uh, from a Dutch, uh, Dutch show. Worked really well. And usually this, this type of content really performs well for us. Uh, product marketing. A huge part of it, right? This is, I'd say, the most complex one, right? Because kind of using the influencer marketing technique and running product marketing is not that easy, right? So we try to do it as a kind of a community-generated, user-generated content type of piece, where you basically say, well, um, let's focus on when users are sharing across the community within our creators, let's make sure to re, you know, kind of repost it. Let's, let's share it to create this uh, proof of concept, right? and force the word of mouth. And indirectly, that becomes our product marketing strategy. And that works really well for us as well. And last but not least, of course, brand affinity. That's kind of the fundamental, that's the baseline behind it all. Being a three-year-old company, uh, <laughs> kind of growing up through COVID, um, um, people are not outside, there's no billboards to, to buy, you know, it's, there's, it's extremely difficult to navigate within the digital landscape only and build brand. So how can we do that? Well, this is a good example. Um, this, of course, Phil Dams outside and not, not a long time ago, so it was post-COVID, but still, um, it's a good way of leveraging um, content for brand. In this case, this is not about the content itself, but it's about the creators kind of building a narrative uh, outside, right? So leveraging brand through content, again, back, going back to what I said in the beginning of us sitting in the back seat and pushing our creators to the front seat and basically empowering them to do a great job is a major part of our um, brand strategy. So those four cornerstones, you might say, well, it's, I mean, it's just it's kind of basic influencer marketing, but if you think about it, um, it's a pretty complex setup, right? Because you need to do it consistently. And the big question is, how does it actually impact the core of the business, right? Going back to what I said in the very, very beginning, how does it impact the core of the business? And I would say it's, I mean, growth is a team sport. We all know that. Um, but I would say this defines as a needle mover because it forces us to work as a team. Our content teams are forced to work very closely with our marketing teams, with our tech teams, product teams, of course, data teams, because all of that needs to tap into that one single goal of creator growth. So it's becoming a, becoming a cross-team effort where everyone works efficiently towards the same goal. Two, being a three-year-old company, your product roadmap might, might look like this. South, east, northwest, right? This type of initiative or vertical needle mover makes it way easier to optimize your product roadmap for a simple, specific user journey. And in this case, user journey is all about sharing content. Making product roadmap way easier to conduct, manage, and optimize for, but also to manage the success or measure the success of. Brand affinity goes without saying, building brand is difficult. It can also be quite intangible. We're trying to make it tangible through word of mouth. When it comes to unit economics, um, if you're catering most of your effort towards high in intent users or high intent traffic, right? If we're reaching out to our creators' audiences who've already followed our creators, 
for a reason. Naturally, you're filling up your user base with high intent traffic. Your high intent traffic impacts your engagement rates positively, your customer acquisition cost positively, your retention rates, and ultimately your customer lifetime value. So your unit economics get a lift, uplift across the full scheme. And very last but not least, creator relations. Building creator relations across six different countries, across six very different countries in Europe, um, is complex. But by putting a formula in front of them and really, really convincing them that this is exactly how we can help them, to help them build their brand, to expand on their content, enforce their personal brand and kind of um, personal opinion, it becomes less salesy, becomes more natural, becomes more organic, becomes more cost efficient, but it also creates word of mouth within the creator community. Basically, starting this lead generation engine in a very natural way. So it, it kind of is a self-fulfilling prophecy, if you will. So, so today, obviously, I could talk about this all day, but I have 15 minutes only. I would like to inspire all of you to think differently, and I would like to inspire all of you, the first thing you do when you get back to your office, collaborate, focus on your needle movers, challenge the status quo, and don't be afraid to change the narrative internally from going from targets and results to needle movers. Test it out, it's quite efficient. Thank you.